concern to all civilized and morally upright people of the world is how these evil empires can do go down so low as to be hoodwinked into believing these false claims against the Gambia government by these riffraff asylum seekers. The British government has been masterminding this campaign against the Gambia, and despite the fact that we are independent, they still continue to treat us as their colonial subjects. Certainly, the British Empire was founded by extraordinary brutality and the massive looting and shedding of the blood of Africans, Asians, and others. Its only legacy is exploitation. Even as we speak, Blacks are being killed in the UK at the hands of the so-called neo-Nazis, skinheads, and racist BNP. The British government, instead of addressing the state-sponsored terrorism on British soil, concentrates on promoting false and outrageous statements about the human rights situation in the Gambia, even though our human rights record is better than that of the UK and USA put together. The government of Britain is not in a position to talk about democracy in any part of the world because the wealth it gathered is tainted with the blood of Africans, Asians, and indigenous peoples of the Americas over many centuries. It is bizarre that in Britain, the self-proclaimed champions of democracy, only blacks die at the hands of the police routinely. And recently, when the police shot dead a black man who did nothing wrong, this sparked days of rioting across England. The British government brought armored cars to the streets describing the rioters as gangsters and quelled the rioting with brute force characteristic of Britain. The government shut down all social media that reported the true picture and eventually took nine-year-old children to court at 4 a.m. for protesting against atrocities committed by the racist British government against minorities. Britain does not have the moral authority to preach human rights to the Gambia, and their ca campaign for the acceptance of homosexuality will never be tolerated in the Gambia. UK and US, who freely preach freedom of the press and information sharing openly, are still laying seed to a foreign embassy in London in violation of international law. Julian Assange's only crime is exercising the freedom of the press and democracy they have always been preaching to others. In the same West, a presidential plane was forced to land and subjected to search for 10 hours because they, because they thought Snowden was on that plane. His only crime for which he is wanted dead or alive is exposing and informing humanity about programs that violate their privacy, freedom of speech, and association. These same Western powers preach press freedom and democracy daily, though they routinely invade and rob resources rich countries of the third world. These are Western countries where being black is tantamount to a death sentence which can be carried out by any white person in the street. We cannot accept the principles of any power that maintains one set of standards for themselves and another for the rest of mankind. The only standards we accept without question are those set out in the Holy Quran and the Holy Bible, Naturally, since these Western powers are challenging the laws of Allah, we will never accept their satanic values despite their hostile, racist, and despicable campaign of smear against the Gambia government, and by extension, the noble Allah-fearing people of the Gambia. In conclusion, we have evidence to back our claims in the form of attestations and correspondences by those unpatriotic and ungodly vermins to the powers that be. We have copies of all false attestations. All Gambians should know that 98% of the people given these false attestations are not even known to the Gambia government. The false attestations made in attempts to gain asylum include but are not limited to the following. In the Gambia, UDP treasurer Amadou Sane prepared a false attestation for one Malang Fati, claiming he was arrested and tortured, a claim Mr. Sane knew to be false. So-called UDP youth wing leader Momodu El Nyasi alias Shingul Nyasi prepared false attestations for one Sehumbalo resident at 1818 Clay Avenue, the Bronx, New York, United States of America who, after gaining asylum based on false testimony, made several false and malicious attestations. Mr. Mbalo is an executive member of the UDP in the United States. 
He is also president of the so-called Gambian Movement for Democracy and Development in the U.S. He has made false attestations for people, including Lamin Sanyang, former staff of the Gambian Embassy in the U.S., and Seni Marena. He also prepared attestations for Keba Kinte, Haji Bohum, Alaji Baba Dukure, Mr. Asan Martin, Babu Karmbalo, Abdullah Bokum, Abu Bakar Silla, Mr. Ibrahim Balde, and others whose details will be provided as investigations continue. They even give false attestations to people we believe are non-Gambians. It is ridiculous that the people that the UDP and their agents around the world are preparing false attestations for by claiming that they are being arrested, tortured, and persecuted are all scarcely known to most Gambians. It beats common sense that the leadership of the UDP are living and operating freely in the Gambia, and at the same time their genial and unknown riffraffs of their party, UDP, are claiming harassment. This is nothing but a callous, treacherous, and wicked attempt to smear the image of the country for narrow political and personal interests. To the shock and dismay of patriotic and God-fearing Gambians, these false claims and attestations have enjoyed the support of high-profile officials of the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee, including Senator Richard J. Dobbin, alias Dick Dobbin, Senator Ross Feingold, Senator Robert P. Casey, Senator Joe Lieberman, Senator Benjamin L. Cardin, and Senator Paddy Moray. To prove that Allah will never support evil, out of thousands of Gambians in the USA, only nine people came out as demonstrators despite their vigorous campaign online for Gambians to come out and demonstrate. God-fearing patriotic Gambians rejected this evil call and went about their normal business. The United States of America cannot morally claim to be the bastion of human rights, freedom, and democracy, as her bloody track record shows from their independence to date. It is a country that was lifted from backwardness, poverty, and violence to superpower status, as well as the largest economy in the world, by the sweat, blood, and tears of millions of African slaves. Though slavery has ended technically today, the armed robbery of petroleum-rich and mineral-endowed countries continues unabated under various pretexts. The most fashionable pretext being promotion of democracy and human rights and so-called war on terror. What a blatant deception. From Vietnam, Latin America, and Korea to the Middle East and Africa, from the Pacific to the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, the story of the self-appointed international policeman remains the same. Everywhere they went, they left nothing but a trail of death and destruction. From the last decade to date, Iraq stands out as a typical example for this 21st century. A country that condemns the Gambia government for putting criminals before the law continues to sponsor this false and disgraceful malicious smear campaign against the government of the Gambia since 1994. Invaded Iraq to get rid of a dictator under pretext and ended up destroying hundreds of thousands of Iraqi lives, committing outrageous war crimes, massive slaughter of Iraqi women and children, and appalling human rights abuses. Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay prisons stand testimony to this. It left Iraqis reeling under a dangerously divided country with deep-seated sectarian violence that is causing death and destruction on a daily basis. A country where the minority black population constitutes 99% of all death row in inmates, where even mentally deranged people are tried and condemned to death and eventually executed, cannot stand even on the devil's platform and condemn any country, more so the Gambia. They cite without any proof an iota of truth, arbitrary arrests, detention without trial and extrajudicial executions in the Gambia. What about the people in Guantanamo Bay? What about the other people that were kidnapped and held in secret locations around the globe in their campaign of terror called War on Terror? Why are these people not being tried if at all they committed any terror-related offenses? Let the USA tell the Gambia and the whole world the definition of extrajudicial execution and then explain who tried, where and when and sentenced to death by drone attack the hundreds of people killed 
the hundreds of people being killed by U.S. drone attacks in the Middle and Far East and Africa.